and welcome to Adobe InDesign Live. So thanks everyone for being here today and we're going to go ahead and just jump right in. I'm going to show you three new text features that just came out at Max, which was a couple of weeks ago, um, and how those features work inside of InDesign. They're integrated tightly in, so it's kind of like you would never know they're there unless you just, someone told you or you accidentally found them. All right, so let's go ahead and go to my computer. And in my computer, I've actually got InDesign CC open. I've got a um, sample document open. The sample document actually is a InDesign uh, stock template. So this was one of the free templates. Um, I believe this is for a newsletter, but I can't remember what it's for. But anyway, I'm only going to concentrate on the uh, main page or front page for it. Uh, there's some text that was already there as a sample. I changed the color to more of an orange Halloween color. I replaced the photo with a stock preview photo. And then I replaced whatever it said here. I believe it was pastel. I replaced that with the word Halloween. And instead of summer issue, fall issue. And that's the beauty of a template is that you can just change it to whatever you want, including the text. Now, the text for all the templates um, uses... Uh, Typekit fonts. That way, as a Creative Cloud member, uh, you've got access to the same fonts used in the template, and that way you don't have to worry about it. Um, we're going to go ahead and experiment with the word Halloween and see some of those features. So the first feature is just additional filtering. Filtering means that uh, if we go, if we pop down the font menu, of course the font menu is a mile long, and I've got it filtered just on Typekit right now. But if I let it see all of my fonts, then I just end up scrolling up and down this list until I find the right font based on the sample. Now, of course, uh, just a couple of other, just these aren't new, a couple of tips for InDesign font menu just in case, is that your recently used fonts will always be at the top. Your fonts are now grouped in a family, so you don't have to see like three fonts when you can just see one, the name of the family, and then twirl down to get to the styles. And of course, the star allows me to mark favorites. So they're for their uh, favorites that I like to use all the time, time in and time out. Uh, like for example, I like the Ephra family. It's just one of my new favorite Typekit fonts. I also like, uh, let's see if it's here on this machine. And, uh, I haven't loaded it yet. Okay, I was gonna say, no. oh, there it is. No, it isn't. Uh, but anyway, there's a font here that I, I, or font that I normally use. I haven't loaded on this new computer yet. But anyway, as you, uh, like fonts, you can go ahead and mark them as favorites, and that way they will always be in the at the top of the list in the favorites. Now, beyond that, you've got some filters here. You've got the Typekit one, which just shows me my Typekit fonts. You've got the favorites, which just shows the favorites. But now there's the filter on classes, and those classes have been expanded. This is the new feature. So everything I just showed you up till now had already been there. What's new, number one, are additional classes. So for example, if I'm looking for serif fonts within the fonts I have, I can just quickly narrow it down to serif fonts and that way I'm not bothered with a mile long font list when I know in fact I want a serif font. Same thing, I typically work more, more often with sans serif fonts, so it quickly allows me to narrow that down. If I narrow it down to Typekit, then I know if I use any of these fonts, any of my fellow uh, Creative Cloud members would be able to uh, sync those same exact fonts and use those as well. So love um, the filtering capability, especially when you get into something more decorative. For example, uh, we're doing Halloween. So for example, I could do handwritten and I can even do uh, script and I can just play around with these, these various fonts that I might want to use like decorative uh, let's see if I find anything in decorative I want. I kind of like, I want to see what this looks like. I don't know that I want to use it. No, I don't want to use it, but it was just interesting to see what it looks like. But anyway, you got the ability to quickly uh, narrow down fonts to the kinds of fonts you're looking for with the new enhanced filtering. Um, let's go back to all classes. Okay, so that was number one, having additional filtering capabilities with the... Um, classes and being able to, to have multiple classes now that you can choose from. The next one is actually one that I was like blown away when I read it in the description because have you ever looked one have you ever had the need to look for a similar font? In other words, you're using a font and you or someone used the font and maybe you don't want to use that one but you want something like it. Uh, so that is the similar feature and that's this little squiggly icon right here. 
So this one is the brand new as of two weeks ago, show similar fonts. So what that means is you've got some type selected, which I do in this case, and I want to find a font similar to that. So I'd go up here and just click that, and boom, it just narrows down the list to fonts that are similar to the one that I already have selected. So they're all sans serif fonts except for the ones in different languages. And of course, I have the ability, I can also, um, I believe, narrow those down as Typekit as well if I do that first. So um, similar fonts would be the second new option, and that works across the board. So if I go in and I highlight a different font, and I, or highlight a different type with different font, and then I go in and say similar, it shows me those right off the bat, the ones that are similar to that. Let me try similar with Typekit. Nope, okay, so I can't narrow it down to just Typekit, but it will show me the similar ones. All right, those two are just kind of handy, and those two are nice to have, and those two I will use on a regular basis. But the third one, best save the best for last, is probably the one that you'll get more use out of. Um, it, and it takes advantage of CC libraries. Now, in the past, you could always add objects from InDesign or other applications into the CC libraries and pull them into other documents or other pages. But now that can actually be done as text, meaning instead of it just placing the object, the, the text frame, and then you pulling that frame back on, which you can still do, you can actually highlight text. And then when you go to the Add Library option, there's now an option called text. Whereas before, it would just be the, the object, the frame containing the text. So, for example, I don't need the fill color, I just need the text. And it's nice that it will also, if I, if I wanted it to, include the character and paragraph styles. But if I go ahead and add that text, that will then give me a new category up here called text in my library. And I can, of course, go ahead and call this Halloween. And then the next time I need the word Halloween, so let's say I'm going to do it here, I can actually drag that in. And notice I get the place gun. And when I get the place gun, I can go ahead and drag that out and get the word Halloween. Now, if I drag that out enough. Come on, a little more. There we go. Drag it out big enough, I'll get the word Halloween and try not to rotate it. Let's put it back to, oops, put back to um, my rotation there, get it back to 100%. Or zero percent. There we go. All right. So now every time I need that text, I can just drag it onto any page. And of course, that's just one word. It could be paragraphs of text, boilerplate text, text you use in contracts, text you use on your brochures and designs. You can have this now massive library of text that you use over and over and over again. And notice it also came in styled. So it came in the exact size, the exact font, the exact color of the previous. Um, implementation. So that is something I will always use because as a, especially as a person that demo software, I hate having to type every time I want to create something in a demo. So now just being able to place that text without having to use lorem ipsum, without having to use for or uh, fill with placeholder text, I can now literally bring in as much text as I want that's, that already says exactly what I needed to say. So once again, since this is going to be short, Let's go ahead and bring in something here. Let's go ahead and bring this one in to the library. I don't know if I want to do that one though. I'll we'll use the word title. That is something we will use. And we'll go ahead and place that one. Content, let's go ahead and add it. All right, and that will give me the word title. So, and I like to rename my library items so I know what they are now, because sometimes like the Halloween is so big, it did not show us a preview. Title um, is showing us like TI, I wouldn't know what that was six months from now. So giving it the actual title of what it is will also help you in the future as well. And once again, if I need the word title somewhere else, or in, in, even in a different document, because your library stays persistent even when this document's not open. So if we create a brand new document, use the default, we need the word title, we bring it in and place it and you get the word title in the exact same font. You need the word Halloween, drag it in, same thing, make it nice and big so it hopefully fits. <laughs> Still didn't do it big enough, 
there we go we get the word halloween all right so this is going to be extremely helpful for people that use the same text same passages same things over and over and over again from here on out being able to place that stuff in the library one more bonus tip is that text that you place in the library as text like i just did also works across InDesign and Illustrator. So whether you do it in Illustrator or whether you do it in InDesign, the text is in the same library. So therefore, I can pull it into either program as text. So just another benefit. And of course, maybe the Photoshop team will also adapt this and then we will have the trifecta of having it work across all three. Uh, does the text frame also capture the interactive animation element settings to the text? If you do it as a frame, I believe it would, because that's where the animation is applied to. If you do it as text, no, then no, because it doesn't apply that. But we can try it right now, since I've got a few, few extra seconds here. Let's go into my um, digital publishing workspace, which will give me my um, animations. Let's go to our animations here, and let's choose one. I've never tried this, so I'm curious to see what it looks like or see what it does. Let's do a fade in, and that will fade in that text. I see that it has the animation on it. So now let me add that to the library as an object. So this is going to be the difference. If I add that as an object now, not as text, but as the graphic element, and then add it in, there's the word Halloween. Let's get rid of this one, and let's see if it brings it over, and we can also say that it's Halloween Annie for Halloween animation. Let's go ahead and bring that in. Let's see what happens. And yes, it did maintain the animation from it as well. So that answers your question. Uh, it will bring in the animation steward. All right. So with that said, and thanks for the questions and thanks for everyone who joined. And Elaine, oh, I'm glad you like to hear from me as well. Um, text inside your CC libraries, filtering text based on uh, the different style classes and also being able to now find similar fonts. All three new features inside of InDesign CC 2018, uh, which was just released two weeks ago at max. So guys, take care. Thanks for watching and we will catch you on the next one. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.